Let's pray together. God, we want to thank you for your goodness. We want to thank you that you have done such amazing things for us, that you are here with us, that you're listening to our song, that you're listening to our praises. God, would you give us the awareness to know that you're with us at all times? Um, And would you help us to live our lives in such a way that um, other people realize that we know that, um, that other people see that we're living different, And we have the opportunity to tell them that we're living different because you are with us. We know that you're there, and we want to honor you with everything that we do, God. I pray that as we continue to worship, as we continue this service, you would just um, make yourself known to us in a special way, that we would see you maybe in ways that we haven't seen you before, that we would learn how to be closer to you this morning. Your name I pray. Amen.
a seat. Did I? No. Oh, there we go. There we go. Good. Good. Having a little bit of sound problems online. Apologize for that. I think that we're all set now and uh, maybe having some struggles in here too. <laughs> you never know. So welcome, welcome. We're glad that you are here today. Glad that we get to connect together and worship together uh, today at Pond Hill Baptist Church. Whether you're joining us on phone or on Facebook Live or here in person, we want to welcome you. Thank you for being here. And uh, we're excited that we get to worship the Lord together. It's already started off really good, hasn't it? Have you enjoyed the worship so far? Amen. I have enjoyed it. I, anytime we can confess to Jesus our love to Him, I think it's great. And I look forward to the day that uh, we don't do it uh, from a distance, but we do it face-to-face -face in person. You know, We know He's here with us, uh, but uh, man, I just can't wait to hear all of our rejoicing together and worship uh, together when we stand in front of His presence. And I'm looking forward to that day. The, so uh, the, uh, the prophet said, even so, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Are you ready for that? I mean, I, I feel like I'm ready for that. I feel like what we need to do is we need to stand a little bit and jump up and down and have a little rapture practice or something. You know, I, I don't know, you know, so, but, uh, but uh, it, it, it is exciting to be here. And uh, I'm thankful that the Lord hasn't left us alone. He hasn't abandoned us, but is there. And uh, one of the ways that we experience that is through our prayer life. And so I hope that you have been uh, spending uh, enough time in prayer already this new year. We already have a lot to be praying for, don't we? And so uh, one of the ways that we can help one another, we can stay connected, is that we can pray for one another. And so I want to direct your attention again uh, to our uh, Connect page. Our, it's kind of like our digital bulletin. It's at www.pondhill.sunday. And uh, if you're watching on Facebook, we don't recommend that you go to that unless you have another device, because we'd like you to stay here with us. Uh, and not have the process of getting back in and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but later in the Facebook feed, we will drop a link to this so that you can actually connect over and fill out a connection card because we want to make sure that we're praying for everyone and all of our needs. And so there's definitely plenty to pray for. So make sure at some point in time today that you connect uh, you let us know how we can pray for you through the connection card that's found on this link. You see it right there on the bottom uh, of that uh, picture. And uh, also, I want to let you know that you can, connect, you can uh, download today's sermon notes, if you haven't already, and kind of follow along with the teaching in Scripture. And uh, even afterwards, go ahead and download those later. If you're here uh, in service and didn't bring them, you can download those, print those out later and even review uh, some of the thoughts that we had from today's teaching. And uh, I'm excited to be able to carry on. I don't think that worshiping God just happens at 1030 to 1130 on Sunday morning. Amen. And I think that it happens throughout the week. And I think as we engage in worship and we engage in learning of God throughout the week, the Bible says, uh, uh, in, in James it says, draw nigh unto God and he will draw nigh unto thee. And I think that's something that happens throughout the week, not just here on Sunday. And so we want to encourage you to keep learning, keep growing, keep reading, keep following. And uh, that's important for us in our faith together as we learn of the Lord. So listen, uh, we want to take time just to pause for a time of prayer right here in our service. And I'm going to invite you wherever you're at this morning, wherever you're uh, connecting with us, uh, that you just take a couple of moments, humble yourselves, have a time of prayer, bring your request before the Lord, and uh, then let's, um, let's uh, join in that time together, all right? So I ask that you just humble yourselves now by our heads and uh, bring your request before the Lord. Father, I am reminded in Scripture where it says, taste and see that I am good. And uh, we just sang about you being a good, good Father. And I'm afraid sometimes we can sing those songs and we can listen to that verse, but sometimes it doesn't really, um, it doesn't really mean as much to us until we have experienced your goodness. And then when we experience your goodness on a firsthand basis, we are reminded of just how good you are. I'm reminded, God, that without you, I can do nothing. 
that God, you strengthen and embolden me and lift me up. Uh, you have saved me, redeemed me, God. You have given me life. Uh, you, you remind us that every good and every perfect gift comes from you. It, it's a gift from you. This world that we live on is a gift from you uh, to show how much you care for us, to show how much you love us, God. But I, I'm so thankful for that. I'm so thankful that uh, you have been um, good to us, even though sometimes we are not good in return. Sometimes, God, we seek our own will. We seek our own way. Sometimes, God, that is clothed in what we would classify as good things. But, God, good things can become an idol if we put them in front of you. And so, God, I ask that you would confront our thinking this morning, that you would uh, confront our behavior this morning, that you, would, that you would bring everything in front of you and that we would be able to see ourselves as you see us, God, we live in a world that does not claim you as God. Oh, we like to talk about a Christian nation, but the truth is, God, we're much more interested in other things than Christ. We've made our possessions our gods. We worship them with our time with our money, our efforts, our energy. And you call us, God, to repent and to make you first in everything. You call us, God, to a life of abandoning those things around us that, that others who are not Christ followers would, 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 would call dear to them. And to seek first a kingdom that we can't really see. A nation that is not of this world, a home that we don't go to every night. God, it's, it's a struggle for us sometimes. And, and in that struggle, sometimes we become a little bit too familiar, a little bit too clingy to the things of this world. And so, God, I pray that you would challenge us in our thinking, that you would change us in our understanding, that you would confront us in our ignorance and in our arrogance, and that you would remind us that this world is not our home. That, God, we seek a far better country whose builder and maker is God. But while we wait for that, God, we pray that you would help us to be children of light, that we would be salt, that we would impact our world with your truth in the way that we live, in the way that we speak, in every aspect of our lives. Would it be renewed in our thinking? Would it be renewed in our understanding? And may the life that you have for us give us life that is that everlasting life that you promised for us. That we would toss away those things that challenge your truth and that we would hold only, hold only to those things that you have said we should hold dear in your scripture. For it's in your name we pray. Amen and amen. We have uh, been talking about this idea of renewing and this idea of what it means to, to have kind of new life within us and our understanding. Sean talked about that last week from Psalm chapter 51. And, and when we were thinking about this concept of idea of renewing, we were thinking about, you know, look at the Psalms and look how the Psalms seem to bring about a renewal in a person's heart and life. So I wondered today, what helps you to renew? What, what is it that you do that kind of breathes life into you? Perhaps this renewal takes place after you've gone to work. Uh, you know, there may be things that you do that kind of set you up for this renewing. You, you may call it a relaxing. You may call it a wind down or probably even a, you could call it a detox, I guess. Uh, it may happen in the evening or it may happen in the morning, depending upon your work schedule and, and your rhythm of life, Wh whatever you call it, whenever you do it. It is that action that kind of breathes, well, it kind of breathes life into you. It kind of breathes life back into your soul. You know, like the world kind of sucks life out of you and you have to do something to 
well, to, to, to give you more life. Anybody else like that? Feel like the world sucks life out of you? And then sometimes you need to just do something to kind of breathe life back in. Perhaps uh, you may be the kind of person that says, you know, I need to go for a relaxing walk. And it's during that walk that you may have a conversation with yourself and your neighbors think you're crazy and that's okay because you're, you're, you're gaining life, right? Or, or perhaps you're one of those people who says, man, I can't wait to get home to have a bath and put on my slippers. You know, and that's, that's relaxing to you. That, that's that breathing life. Uh, you may be the person that says, man, I can't get home to exercise some more. <laughs> you know, no, 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 nothing... Nothing gives you life like a good workout, you know? And so I know there's people, I see that hand, God bless you. <laughs> so, but, you know, uh, you know, we all gain life from somewhere, don't we? We all, we all, you may be enthralled by the idea of you get to go home and you get to veg out in front of the TV or you get to check your email or, 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 or maybe your email has no, uh, uh, nothing in the inbox. Maybe that, maybe that breathes life into you. Uh, maybe it is that you like to settle down with a good book, you know, and those, those activities help you to renew your spirit. They help you to, to, to put life in perspective. And can I say to you, this is not an unbiblical mindset. It's not ungodly to think about the ways in which we should relax and renew. It's actually a very biblical action when we stop and we pause and we plug in to that which is genuine and true life. That's what the scripture is asking. In Psalm chapter 51, as we learned last week, David had just experienced this life-draining event. It wasn't even a life-draining event that someone else caused upon him. It was a life-draining event because of the poor decisions that he had made that led him towards sin. And when he was confronted with that sin, I think that there was a lot of there was a lot of, well, there was a lot of weight taken off of him. Nathan comes up and says, hey, you are the man, you have sinned against God. And finally, his, the weight of that sin that he had been bearing, that he had been struggling under himself is kind of taken off. And Psalm 51 is this, this prayer that uh, David begins to, to realign himself, to find life again in the scripture and to ask the Lord for renewal. I don't know about you, but I need this renewal too. I need to understand what, what, the, what the psalmist, what the Psalters found that brought them this life-giving essence. I want to create these life-giving routines in my life that lead to a renewed spirit, a renewed understanding that lifts me up spiritually and says to me, you know, uh, you are drawing life from the right sources. That's really what I desire. And so this morning, really what I want to do is I want to continue our journey through the Psalms to say, what is it that the, that the psalmist said gave them life? And I don't think that we can go to any greater of a psalm than the very first psalm. So I want you, if you have your Bible, go ahead and open it up to the pages of Psalms chapter number one. This is a familiar psalm for most people, but can I say to you, it shows us this concept of renewal and this idea through many images that the, that the psalmist kind of brings out. Here's what it says in Psalms verse number one, and I'm just going to kind of take these one by one, all right? Here's what it says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Now, I love the way it parts out here because it's actually going to do a contrast. It's contrasted with verse two that we'll get to in a minute. But the first part of the contrast is kind of where we saw David last week, right? He was in a place where he shouldn't have been. Those that were, were surrounding him to, to speak life into him, he'd sent them out to the battlefield and he found himself looking and lusting upon and having a sexual relationship with this person that wasn't his wife, right? And can I say to you, when you look at what the scripture says here, it shows this progression of sinfulness that happens. Blessed is the one that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. I just want to say to you that that idea, that concept there is those that are just walking along life's way and, and they hear negative things or wrong things. It's hard to live in this world without walking, right? in the counsel of the ungodly. Because it seems like the ungodly have a lot of counsel. 
Don't they? They're always spewing something about the way we should think or the way that we should act or the things that we should believe in. And so it's difficult to get completely away from that. But it doesn't mean that we have to stop and take up their counsel. In fact, look what it says. It says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners. Notice what's happened here. It's kind of like we're walking in the way we hear something that probably we shouldn't listen to, or we, we find something, a discussion that's going on, and perhaps we have the best of intentions, but we stop and we begin to dialogue with this. And notice who we're dialoguing with here. We're dialoguing with the sinners. We're having a conversation about the way of sinfulness. And then what happens? We become comfortable with sin. We take a seat with the scornful, right? Can I say to you, there is a way that seemeth right unto man, the scripture says. The scripture says there's an easy way, there's a broad way, and many choose that way. But it also says there is another way that leadeth to life. And here's the contrast, verse number two. But rather than the person who is hanging out with sinful and scornful and those ideas, but rather his delight Who's the light? The, 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 the soldier of the Lord, the, the person of the Lord, the, the follower of Jesus. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. So he says, he's contrasting the, the two ways. There's a way that seems right. The world seems to spew it. It's all around us. It's happening. It's going on. And if we're not careful, we can get caught in its mob mentality and move in that direction. But there's another way. And that way is classified as the way of the law of the Lord. He's referring to scripture here. But his delight, our delight, should be in the law of the Lord, in the word of God is what the law of the Lord is. That's the psalmist's way of saying the scriptures. But our delight is in the scriptures. And in the scriptures, we should, what does it say? Meditate day and night. Meditate day and night. I want, to, I want to come back to that in a little bit, but let's just continue, right? And the one who meditates in scriptures, the one who finds his way in scriptures, the one who delights in the scriptures, he shall be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Can I just say, that's the person I want to be, right? That's the kind of person I want to be, right there. But that, that idea is contingent upon verse number two, right? That idea is contingent. If verse number two is true, then I can avoid verse number one and I can gain verse number three, right? In fact, it continues on. The ungodly are not so. That goes back to verse number one. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff, which the wind driveth away. They're unstable is what he's saying. James says it this way. They're like the, they're like the wave of the sea that is driven by the wind and tossed. There's no structure, there's no strength, there's no security there. It's wishy-washy. We call it in our days a flip-flopper, right? Therefore the ungodly, verse number five says, shall not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous, right? They will not be able to stand before judgment. They will not be able to congregate with the righteous, Verse number six says, for the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. The Lord knows the way of the righteous. Why? Because he's leading. He is righteous. He's leading in and toward himself. As I, as I read this scripture, and I've been reading it for a few weeks now, I'm, fair, I'm pretty familiar with Psalm chapter number one. At one point in time, I probably had it all memorized. If you asked me after service, if I could say it to you, I could probably do it with a bunch of helps. So let's put it that way, right? It's a good verse to commit to memory. And I think the significance of the passage is found in the way in which we handle the word of God. Here's what I believe the scripture is saying to us. So this is like the, the main point you know, don't check out after I tell you, though, because I usually like to save these till the end so, they, so that we're together with and we all stay together. Here's, here's what I believe the scripture is saying. We experience renewal in our lives as we learn to delight in God's word. As we learn to delight in God's word. And I think we have a struggle with this, to be honest with you. 
I think we have a struggle with this. So let's look at this idea. What does it mean to delight in God's word? What, what, is, what does that phrase mean? And so I asked myself this question. This was a question for me. For me. Uh, how do I characterize my relationship with the scriptures, with the word of God? How do I characterize my relationship with the scriptures? And quite often, I'm ashamed to tell you this, sometimes what I characterize my relationship with the scriptures is like a task list, something that I have to get done so I can check off for the day and move on to the rest of my day. Well, that's not the only way. Some people just totally disbelieve the scriptures, right? Right? They disbelieve the scripture. They don't, even, they don't even need a Bible because they don't believe that they're true, and so they don't need it. Other people, they own the scriptures. You know what I'm saying? And I ask them, I'll say, hey, well, have you ever read the Bible? No, but I got one. It's like you get points for having a Bible. You know, you, I'm closer to God because I have a Bible. Well, they own a Bible. Some, uh, some people actually even are casual with their scriptures because, and when I think about casual with my scriptures is what I think, you know, I'm coming to church, so I better take a Bible with me. You know, uh, uh, the pastor's coming over. Let's put the Bible on uh, the, 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 the table in the middle where the coffee is, right? Let's, let's make sure that, you know, it, it's a casual. Sometimes we read the scriptures, you know, we, we, we have a relationship where we read the scriptures, but even that sometimes uh, most people don't have a continual basis where they're looking into the word of God, where they're reading the scripture. And so their information about God's word is based upon what other people say and not what God says. And that's a struggle with that. But the author did not say, blessed are those who own a Bible, right? <laughs> because that would mean if I bought more Bibles, I'd be more blessed, right? I mean, how many Bibles do you have? I probably have 40 of them. I must be really blessed, right? That's not what it said. It didn't say blessed are those who are casual with the Bible. What it said was blessed are those who delight in the Word of God. What does the word delight mean? You know, we, we, we kind of get our mindset, but, but what, what does the word delight mean? I'm going to give you a couple of ideas of what it means to delight in the word of God. Here is one of the words. One of the words is delight means to regard it as precious, to regard it as precious. Now, anytime I hear this word, my mind goes directly to Lord of the Rings, you know, and, and, uh, and uh, you know, my precious, you know. And I just think, well, that's not, that's got to be something different than that. You know, you know, that's kind of the idea, you know, he had a, he had a, he had a lust that wasn't, uh, uh, that was, that was not a holy uh, mindset, right? Uh, but it doesn't just mean something precious. It also means something that is desirable, something that is desirable, something that I desire, something that like uh, when I come home from the evening that like, I can't wait to get in the scriptures. I can't wait to get in the word of God. I can't wait to see what God has to say for me. Well, is that how our relationship with scriptures is categorized? Because that, that's what the Bible is asking us. It's asking us to delight in the word of God, which means we may need to take a new understanding about how we treat the scriptures, about how, how we engage in the scriptures. And then I love this word because this was the underlying idea of delighting, right? Is that it is something that is satisfying. Now, this is where I think the renewal process begins because I, I, I believe what it says, what it's saying is what the psalmist is telling us is that we have got to delight in the word of God. And when we come to the word of God and when we delight in it, when we're looking into it, when we're reading it, when we're studying it, uh, when we're engaging in the scriptures, that they become incredibly satisfying to us. What do I like to read more than any other thing? Where do I like to spend my time more than any other thing? You see, what the devil has done is he has given us a world full of distractions. It's like we're walking in the way and there's a voice over here that's calling us and a voice over there that's calling us. Actually, it's not even a voice. It's like a billboard because now we don't even need a voice. We just need a flashy picture. Boom. Oh, I love that. Oh, nice. Pretty. Right? Or... May I even say it's 120 channels. He's great at distracting us. And yet in the midst of this, we find ourselves drawn down, weary, heavy laden, needing rest and rejuvenation. 
And we know the scripture that Jesus says, hey, if you're weary, if you're heavy laden, come unto me and I will give you rest. And yet we're still waiting for this renewal. And I believe what the psalmist is saying here is he is saying there is rest and renewal to be found when we delight in the words of God, when we delight in them. Uh, We understand this emotion when it comes to our television show, don't we? You know, we watched a particular television show until the end. And at the end of the television show, you know, there's that massive cliffhanger, right? And you're like, oh my goodness. And then they say, find out next season. (laughs) And you have to wait, what, two weeks or, well, a month, whatever it is. I know this because I experienced this myself this last week. My wife and I started watching Cobra Kai last year and... uh, and, we, you know, it's, it's part of our history. It's sinful, I know, but it's okay. I, I can get forgiveness, I guess, you know. But uh, they were saying, oh, the new season was going to hit on January 3rd and then January 1st. And, you know, and it was like we were delighting in the fact that a new show was going to come out, a new season was going to come out. We, we understand it when it comes to uh, that TV show, or perhaps we understand it when it comes uh, to Friday night, you know. TGIF, name name his entire restaurant on the fact that people want to just unwind and relax and rejuvenate. So thank God it's Friday, right? And you can go uh, have a meal, have a burger, have something to drink, right? And because they believe that it's going to give them life. They delight in those things. And the scripture is saying to us, if we are going to have the right relationship with God that is renewed day in and day out, day in and day out, we're going to have to learn to delight in the word of God, delight in scripture. And let me show you how the psalmist says this. Psalm chapter 40, verse number eight. It says, I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. Psalm 112, verse number one, it says, Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. Do I delight greatly in the commands, the laws of God? Psalm 119, verse number 16 says, I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. Psalm 119, verse 35, it says, Make me to go into the path of thy commandments, For therein, in the commandments, in thy laws, for therein do I delight. In fact, you can continue in Psalm chapter 119, verse 24, verse 27, verse 70, verse 47, verse 77, verse 92, verse 143, verse 174, over and over and over again, the psalmist says the secret to his renewal is that he is able to delight in the word of God. He doesn't just own a Bible. He's not just casual with the Bible. He understands that the word of God is where he draws his life. And he delights in the word of God. He loves the word of God so much that the word of God becomes a source of strength to him, that he draws satisfaction from simply being in the scriptures. That's what it means to delight in the word of God. I want to be able to delight in the word of God. Psalms 119, verse number 97 says this. Oh, how I love thy law. Oh, how I love the Bible. Oh, how I love the scriptures. Did you hear that? That's what he's saying. The law is a word, not just for the 10 commandments or or the two that God gave or all the other laws that are in. It's all encompassing of the word of God, the scriptures, Oh, how I love the scriptures. Well, let me ask you, is that your mindset for the scriptures? Oh, how I love them. I love the scriptures. And I say to you, sometimes we love things way more than the scriptures. And we wonder why we live a life that's drained. Can I say to you, the lifeblood of the believer is to stay connected with Jesus. Would you agree with me? I stay connected with Jesus. One of the ways I stay connected with Jesus is by loving his word, is by delighting in his word. You say, Pastor Mike, where do you get that from? Well, it's this little gospel called John, 
verse, chapter one, verse number one, right? In the beginning was the, what did he say? Was the word. Oh, wow, the word. And the word was with God and the word was God, verse 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. If I'm going to grow closer to Jesus and draw my life from him, then I am going to have to learn how to delight in the words of God. I'm going to have to delight in the scripture. It's going to change the way I view the word of God and the scriptures to me. It's going to challenge me to be in the word of God more often, in the scriptures more often. It's going to challenge me to let my life routines revolve around the scriptures instead of revolving around other things. This is what the psalmist is saying when he says, I delight in the law of God. And then he says this, the law of God is my meditation all the day. I love that the scripture makes it so simple because here's, here's what I think. I think when I ask myself this question, how do I delight in God's word? That's a shift in my mindset then he gives me an action to take on that. Oh, how I love thy word. It is the meditation of my day all day long. So how do I gain a greater delight in the word of God? How do I gain a greater delight in the scripture? And I think that this verse just nails it. It says, hey, if you're going to gain a greater delight on the scripture, then you're going to have to learn to meditate on the scripture. Now, we don't like that word meditate. You ever hear that? We don't like to talk about the idea of meditation because you know what the devil has done with the word meditation? He has hijacked it. He has stolen it. And so now when most people think meditation, they think something that's not of God, but rather of the evil one. And can I say to you, God is the author of this. He invites us in to meditate upon his word. Actually, look at this. Psalm chapter one, verse number two, it says, but his delight is in the law of God and in this law doth he, what's the word? Meditate day and night. So God is inviting us into this idea of meditating upon God's word day in and day out. Now, listen, I don't want to say a lot about this activity because guess what? I'm going to talk about it next week. So it's like a plug. I want you to come back. Let's talk about, let's talk about how we meditate upon God's word, how we do this in a God-like manner. And why does the scripture spend so much time inviting us into this idea of meditating upon the word of God? In fact, when I think about this idea of meditating, here's really how the word is used in the Old Testament. It is to reflect deeply on the subject. It is to contemplate the subject. Let the scripture mull through your mind. Let the scripture roll over and over through your mind. Now, this is so important because I would rather have the scripture on my mind than any words to any song. I would rather have the scripture on my mind than any, any line in a movie. But you know what I find? I find that I'm quicker to recite a line in a movie that I saw at some point in time or recite a line of lyrics from a song that I've heard at some point in time that I am to recite the words of God. This is what God is calling us to, to let our mind be saturated by the word of God. Now, let me just give you an example of one of the ways that I do this. This may be beneficial to you. It may not be beneficial to you. But this is one of the ways that I practice this idea of meditating on the Word of God. As I'm going through my Bible reading for the day, and this year I'm reading through the Bible chronologically. Some of you may be joining me. We've, we put that out on our Sunday page. You can download the file from there. I know a couple are. I know some are just reading through it from Genesis right through it. Uh, here's how I do it, though, all right? As I am reading through the Scripture, I'm asking God, to make a verse stand out to me. And I will read and I will mark the verses that kind of stand out to me. And one verse just will seem to fit better with me than other verses. And I will take that verse and I write that verse at the top of my planner. Because I want that verse that I truly believe God is speaking to me. I want to meditate it on throughout the day. And so what I'll do is when I open up my planner to check off another task list or to add something that needs to be done, I will read through that verse again. I'll read through that verse over and over and over throughout my day 
so that I can let the words of God press into my mind. Now, here's what I've done for you today. Uh, I have, I, on, the, on the first page of a handout, uh, if, you haven't, if you don't have it, you can download it, you can look at it later. I have divided Psalm chapter 1 into six days. I put Psalm 1-1, Psalm 1-2, Psalm 1-3 in the flyer. I think what a good exercise would be for us this week is to take one of those verses every day, write it on a three-by-five card, let it roll through our mind. And in the Hebrew word of meditation, it's not just something we contemplate, it's spoken. So I would encourage you to say that verse over and over again throughout your day. Just read it over again. And all we're trying to do is let our mind be saturated by the ideas of God. Now, we start off with Psalm 1-1, right? There's a whole lot of voices that are speaking at us. We're walking through this world with a, with a whole lot of background noise, a whole lot of static that's going on. I want my mind to be focused on the things of God. And the way that I do that is I meditate upon the Scripture. All right? All right, now that's all introductory. Let me give you six points. You ready? Six benefits of delighting in God's Word. All right, if you're taking notes, I'm going to go really, really fast here. But I think this is important. This is taken right out of Psalms chapter number one. Are you ready? The person who delights in God's Word, according to verse number one, is blessed. Blessed is the man who eschews all this. Blessed is the man who avoids all this, right? They are blessed. The person who delights in the Word of God is blessed because they know the Scriptures. They know how to avoid the temptations. They stay away from the sinful conversations and the sinful discussions. They avoid it because they know what righteousness is. Are you with me? They are blessed. Secondly, the Bible says the person who delights in the Word of God is renewed. They are renewed. I love this because that's the imagery of the, uh, 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 of the, the tree being planted by living waters. Did you see that? I love that because in my mind, when I think Psalms and I think waters, I think of Psalm chapter number 23, where it says, the Lord leads us by still waters. Why? He wants to restore us, renew us, right? By the way, those of you who have kids uh, downstairs this morning, they are studying Psalm chapter 23. Make sure you talk with them about them. Here's the other one. The, the scripture says in verse three, the person who delights in the word of God is fruitful, is fruitful. I love this because the Bible invites us into this relationship where we bear fruit for him, where other people hear the message of Jesus. So when we delight in the word of God, the scripture says we are fruitful. The person who delights in the word of God, it says that he is prosperous, prosperous. Can I say to you that here's what prosperous means? Because we think prosperous and because we've been so inundated by the world's idea of prosperous, we think Lamborghini, Porsche, big house with a swimming pool, we think of lottery. It's, and those are, those are not biblical ideas, okay? I just want to let you know, all right? There's, there, that's not what God says. When it's successful, here's what success means according to the Bible. It means to make steady, favorable progress. Isn't that awesome? To make steady, favorable progress. Here's what that means in other terms. You look more like Jesus every day. That's what it's referring to. Not only is that, but the person who delights in God's word is secured. Remember, the, 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 the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away, right? That's, that's not security, but the person who delights in the word of God is secure, and the person who delights in the word of God is directed because the Lord knows the way of the righteous, and he leads and he guides. Can I say to you that I truly believe that one of the ways that we are going to renew our spirits in this new year uh, is, is that we are going to learn how to delight in God's word. We're going to learn what the scripture means to us, and we're going to learn to have a new relationship with the scripture because we want to love the law of God. And we're going to learn to meditate upon God's law day in and day out. 
I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to renewing God's way. I've tried other ways, right? I've tried those other ways. Probably haven't tried all of them. But I will tell you, the Scripture invites us into a relationship with the Scripture that is characterized by delight. Learn to delight in the Word of God. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for Psalm number one that challenges us with this idea of delighting in your Word. I pray, God, that we would learn how to delight in your Word, that we would have the desire to just love the law of God, love the words of God, love the Scriptures, and let that be an action point in our lives. Because sometimes we mix up love with an emotion when it's actually a choice that leads to action. So help us, God, to delight in your word. For your name we pray. Amen. Let me give you a couple of next steps. I would love for you to read Psalm 1. It's a very short read, uh, very easy. And then memorize Psalms 1-2. I think that's a good verse for us to memorize. And then as I told you, I think it'd be good if we just commit each day to meditate upon a different verse. Write it down on a three by five card. Put it up in your mirror. Carry it with you. Slip it in your pocket, whatever it may be. Make it your screensaver on your phone. Uh, and uh, just uh, have a way in which you can be reminded day in and day out of the scriptures that we can meditate upon. And then I think if, as we commit to read the scripture each and every day, that's our, that's our beginning part of uh, delighting in God's word. And so as we read, then we begin to meditate. I believe God will begin to renew our spirits and in essence, build in us more Christ-likeness, which is where life comes from. All right, God bless.